Look at the energy that comes in. in. And we're recording. And it's episode what? Episode uh, episode six. Six? Yeah, yeah six. seven, dude. Is it seven? I think it's six. No, because five was my lucky number, the last one. So it must be number six. Number six. Thanks number for listening. Six. <laughs> six last <laughs> 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 oh god we're off to a ropey start as usual mate uh, well we're joined here today by a number of guests that are going to come in and out and it'll all become clear as to why very soon because i'm Excellent. not at home as you can see from the background on location and where are you are you in some airbnb garden getaway or what <laughs> i know right i know i figured you'd have a you'd had a location shift so i thought i would and i've just Come downstairs into my kitchen instead. It's so, lovely, dude. Uh, I like the greenery yeah, you know, in the backdrop. I'm just a little bit sick of being in that one room in the house, man. Like, you know, it's been a month and two days since I've left that room. So I thought, you know what, it's time It's time to maybe just have a little bit of a change up and see what happens down here, you know? Change of scenery. My change of scenery. Yeah. I don't want to just switch it to talk about myself instantly, but I feel like it's too awkward otherwise because I've got Mikey sat next to me. <laughs> I've, I went on a last minute trip to the World Cup and I'm here with Mike Smith of MB Side Through Fame who is also Yay. Brendan's mechanic Hi guys Amazing. Amazing So you could say we're joined on this episode by a factory mechanic 100% we are Yeah Yeah, yeah. yeah. And one of the wealthiest men in the south of the UK as well, which is also really cool. <laughs> Dude, make that the title. That's got to be the title. Yeah. We interview one of the wealthiest okay. men in the south. <laughs> that is a good episode title, isn't it? The wealthiest man in the south of England. <laughs> yeah, so I, I, I feel a bit spoiled, actually, dude, because I, I'm able... I, I just... Bren just said, well, why don't you come to the World Cup? And I was thinking... It was raining back home, and I was thinking, actually, you make a good point. Why don't I just come to the World Cup? Like, dude, it makes sense. Yeah. If I can, why not? Why not? Yeah, what's keeping you at home? What am I, 25? <laughs> and that's but how, <laughs> how's, the, how's the vibe, though, man? Are these guys a bit like, oh, why has he come along? You know, is it, is it a bit of that, really? Are they talking about you when you're not there? You know, like inside jokes and stuff. Like they had a lovely hotel with nice sofa space, and then there's just been a bag explosion on their sofa. Like a homeless guy's walked in and yeah. just kind of started sleeping there. Yeah, and now the room smells like knee pads. So and urine, and urine, yeah. and, and urine. urine and of course, urine. yeah. Well, if you need to piss, take a piss. You got to say. <laughs> <laughs> you got to do. If you, even if it's in the wind, if you need a piss, you got to piss. When in Maribel, mate, you got to piss. I'm gonna send some fucking funny memes of that, mate. Yeah. I'm embarrassed. Those guys are doing great work. I think it's uh, bloat boys on Instagram. Keep making like a bunch of memes and stuff. So, yeah, it's funny. Really funny. Yeah, I don't know who those guys are. Shout out because you're always coming through with the memes and the their stories. Though, dude, they're just like stacked all the time. You go to look at that one that he's posted of like you or me. Yeah, and there's like a hundred on there. Yeah, it's <laughs> like, so good. Isn't it? Yeah, this guy's just on it all the time, so it's pretty funny. Hey, first and foremost, let's get it out of the way. Yeah, how are the ribs, dog? Oh man, dude, talk about roller coaster again. Hey, like, oh, I mean, I feel like last week was pretty positive up until Thursday, and Thursday was bad. Um, yeah, ended up back in hospital, so that's that. Um, just. It was really weird, right? Like I was just sat on the bed and I started feeling this little bit of a tingling pain in my back. And I was like, oh, that's weird. Not felt that one before. That's a new one. And didn't really think anything of it. And then it gradually got worse and worse until the tingling pain became like a stabbing pain. And every time that I took a breath in, not even a deep breath, just any breath in, in it felt like I was being stabbed in the like just below my rib cage and honestly man it, you can't put up with that stuff for too long so i put up with it all night and didn't really sleep just sort of sat there i'd nod off then i'd take a breath and i'd wake me back up and then in the in the morning i just had to make the phone call and go back to hospital um called 111 which is you know ultimately every time you call that they tell you to go to hospital anyway it may as well just like speed dial to a and e right 111 I actually never use 111. 
I don't. I think it's like an advice line, but the advice is always from from any any time I've used it, and maybe it's because I've always had an actual injury. The advice is always the same. It's always go to hospital. Go yeah. to hospital or, or speak to your GP or something like that, isn't it? Yeah, and there's no point speaking to the GP because they're too busy anyway. So it's like, well, just go to hospital. So yeah, went to hospital, and um, <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I, you know, you have to feel bad trying to. Sh- not shit on the NHS because the NHS is an amazing thing and obviously it's a great health service, but it was a bad experience. It was a really bad experience. Yeah, real bad. So I went, got there, um, obviously I had respiratory, respiratory problem. So you're not allowed to go in the main hospital because of COVID. So they shunted me into this back room in this hospital, had to get a COVID test, waited for that to come back. That came back negative. They then did my bloods. Um, and then I don't know what happened with those. And then, oh yeah, then they did my blood and then they took me for an x-ray, got the x-ray and then they just put me in this, like basically a cupboard with just a, a really small chair, which is for anyone who's ever broken the ribs out there will know that sitting on a chair is really uncomfortable for any like length of time. So they just put me on this plastic chair in this room and, and the guy was like, oh, the doctor will come and speak to you shortly. So four and a half hours later, I was still sat there. Nobody had even walked past the room. Like not a single person had walked past. All the rooms, lights were all off. There was just one room with a light on, which was mine. And I just sat there four and a half hours on my own. Um, Again, not shitting on the HS. People do great work, no doubt. But yeah, when you've got a respiratory problem and you can't breathe, to be left alone for four and a half hours, probably... It doesn't doesn't seem seem smart, smart. let's just put it that way. Yeah, so it doesn't seem like the smartest thing. Um, and yeah, I had to make an emergency phone call to my mum and I was like, can you bring me some food or and some water? I've been sat here, nobody's been to even speak to me yet um, for a while. And just as she was on the way, the doctor came and was like, look, we've, we've tested everything. Um, we don't know what it is, basically. Your ribs are always moving. Something could have moved. It's been sticking in your lung. Um, we thought it was an infection. It doesn't look like it's an infection. If it comes back, it comes straight back to A and E. So it was like, oh, great. So went home. <laughs> so Thank goodness it wasn't an infection anyway. Eh? Yeah, that suck ass. That would be awful. So yeah, um, boring story out of the way, really. But yeah, that's how recovery is going. But then today is the first day again positive, dude. Last week it was a it was a walk to the end of the street, and today I've been. In the car, not driving, but I've been for a picnic with with the missus. Nice, life is good. It, it was good, man. It was nice just to get out, like see something other than this street and a hospital. So, yeah. Any injuries like that, it's always like you take steps forwards and then there'll be a couple steps back and then it'll be big steps yeah. forwards again. So it's all- That's exactly what it feels like, isn't it? Like you go forward and then you're like, okay, right, I'm making some progress. Like last week when we did this podcast, I was like, right, Starting to see a little bit of momentum now, you know, I've been for a walk. And then that Thursday, it just felt like the whole world just came tumbling down again. It was like, right, okay, can't breathe. Awesome. In loads of pain, back on loads of painkillers. So, yeah, I don't know. It is what it is, but it's uh, well, it's not an easy one, man. It's a, it's a tough one, this. It's a tough one. It works well for my dumb brain, but I just think every day you do, if you're like banged up or whatever... Every day you do, you don't have to do it again. You're always moving towards... I know that's quite a moronic way of looking at it. I think that's a really good way of looking at it. You know what I mean? That's a good way. You don't have to do it again. Yeah, yeah. And it's the same as like, even if you have to take a long route round on a map, I always just think, well, that's... Yeah, I just have to take... I'm still moving towards the final spot I'm aiming at. Mm. I don't know. One of the hardest things, isn't it? It's like trying to stay positive when you're in that sort of a state. Like, you just think it's like... It's the worst thing ever, but it's doom and gloom for sure. You you are moving. It, it, bring, it brings up, up it brings up a lot of things as well. Like I just had a bit of a moan at Emma. I was like, you know, it's. I remember like a few years ago when I nearly died as well. Um, you you quickly realise who your actual friends are, and that sounds probably horrible to say. And I hope none of my friends listen to this that haven't reached out. But like, you go, okay, well, some of my really close friends have been amazing. They've been here. They've asked if they can help. They've you know, a few of them have brought food around, so Emma's not had to cook. Because all this sort of stuff, like we spoke about last week, it's hard. Like, it's difficult for your partner that's living with you 
you know, I'm in a bit of a shit mood 90% of the time because of pain pills and this and that. Um, and it does make you like really think and especially thinking about people that I don't even know through the podcast, you know, Instagram people, YouTube comments, whatever, have been so supportive that it's it's amazing. But it definitely does make you realise, you know, that certain people you think you're close to, but you don't hear anything from them. And you're like, maybe this is the thing where you start figuring that out again a little bit. Like, okay, right, well, that person who I thought was my really close friend, they've not actually called me for a month. <laughs> you know what? That's, that's not great. In a way as well, you get a bit of perspective from every injury. You sort of like... Yeah, I don't know. You sort of like um, realise how good you got it when you are healthy. Because health is a hard one, isn't it, dude? You just take it for granted. When you got it, you're just like yeah. throwing yourself yeah. off cliffs and banging turns. And, you know, totally. you're not really thinking about it. Yeah. Really, are you? you just... It's funny. I was speaking to Sam as well earlier from uh, Rogate Sam, Sam Bowell. And uh, and he said the same thing. He's like, dude, I'm, you know, I was just talking to someone about Freedom Ride and we had like such an amazing time at that. And then everything was going so good. Like, you know, even we were planning a few things and there was just so much going on that was really positive. And it's just all of a sudden you just, it's like flicking a switch. It's like, yep, you're not doing anything for months. <laughs> you're just going to be, you know, and I'm really lucky that, you know, we have this outlet and amazing people, but it's definitely a real- reality check. Like you said, it's... Back you amongst think- it. And all, all of those dates that they give you as well, they don't take into consideration that it won't be, 10 weeks in, you won't be in the same pain. So yeah, you might not yeah. be fucking riding your bike, but you will be like doing way more stuff. You'll be doing picnics and stuff. Dude, you're talking to three <laughs> people that have got first hand experience ten times over here. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the ribs, Mike. Yeah. Dude, I, we were talking about it today, right. weren't we? We were like <laughs> Right, we were talking about when you when a post goes viral, someone yeah. like people from outside biking always comment on a, on um what is it, like the Darwin effect or whatever? Okay. Like, okay. Talking about like how people that like dangerous stuff end up, <laughs> you know, and I was like crying with laughter going down a pointlessly steep hill, like pointlessly steep because there's rocks coming past me, like such big rocks from Mikey behind, like whacking them off turns. <laughs> and I'm like, ah! and like that, that's what it takes for me to have fun. You know, yeah. it's like, so dumb. What a dumb human, I guess. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I get on that. Yeah, dumb guys die first. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> Have a good time, though. Oh, dear. So what's the riding like out there? I'm interested to know. Like... But I tell you what, we're on a high at the minute, aren't we? We've had one of the really? best days. Yeah. Honestly, the crew's sick. Like, yeah. so, such good boys. And the riding's been incredible. Yeah. Because, like, I wasn't sure, really, especially first run. Have you been there before, Owls? I can't. Rem- I can't remember if I've been here. Oh, it's tough life. It's tough at the top, isn't it? When you can't remember if you've been. No, somewhere. I've done a couple really? of uh, tourist board trips here in Slovenia. So you just get shipped around different bike parks. And you kind of just do one run of each and then move on to the next one. You film down it, so you're not really taking it in. Yeah, yeah I know. I'm a sport brat, 100. percent But I don't know. So relatable. Been, this rec- podcast, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I've been here before, but it's been brilliant. We went down the first like green run. It's just like motorways, big holes. All our arms are falling off, and I was kind of a bit like, "Whoa, back in the mountains," you know? Really? And, and then we found the Lomas. Right, sick. When okay, so just Lomas. first then, just give us the lay of the land a little bit. Like, where are you, and how far are you from the World Cup that's coming up and stuff like that? Are you travelling or? We're in Maribor, Slovenia, on the World Cup site in the pits, and we're lapping the loam trails oh like okay loam not loam <laughs> loam no, loam not loam hey yeah. we might have a are we have we got a guest coming in this is gonna be a shit <laughs> like this is your life, life. <laughs> this is really yeah i really i, I apologize yeah i apologize right. there's zero structure thought planning <laughs> Impromptu. might be a tough listen not might be a tough listen but doesn't matter mate as long as we're having fun Hey, we've got Bren's going to come and join us in a second. But okay, okay. so for Bren, <clears throat> basically, it's bikes come off the truck. It's his race bike, so he's just getting everything dialed in, and we're just doing a sort of initial laps. But it is killer, isn't it? It is really good. so good. Yeah, honestly, really? so good. The loam tracks are like rocky tracks. But yeah, they're just right. like <laughs> they're just like <laughs> secret trails. So it's, yeah. it's super sick. Really, really good. And yeah. it's, it's, it's quite uh, mind-boggling. So we've had, first of all, Brent follow, and he's on a downhill bike and enjoying himself, which means it's quite a lot, quite
quite a fair amount going on, you know. <laughs> yeah. And then we've got needles shown up as well. So oh, wow. then there's a certain amount of swinging going on. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And sort of you just have to kind of try and follow the madness ahead. And you and you forget <laughs> like how good Needles is as well. Like you forget yeah. that he was podium World Cup. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, So like you follow him just thinking, oh, it's just Needles, you know, like he's super neat guy. It's one of our mates. <laughs> yeah, yeah, super neat guy. And then you follow him, it's like, fuck, whoa. Dude, he's, <laughs> so, he's so dialed, yeah. Needles. is so dialed. You follow him, he's just like, I kind of feel like he's the opposite of what I feel like on a bike. Yeah. Like, really? Back ends everywhere. And, and Needles is just picking apart a track, like, really methodically. precise. Yeah. Yeah, really precise, really calculated. Yeah. Like, everything right, looks okay. really calculated and clean. Yeah. <laughs> and me and Ollie That's are just crazy. Like, <laughs> 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 For anyone who thought that, then Needles not just a podcast host anymore, still shreds. <laughs> a big time, dude. Yeah, still goes hard. So yeah, my apologies for you sat in your kitchen and uh, us having a nice time, but it is good riding, and it's been a while. I'll be honest, it's been rainy back home. Mate, you deserve it. You deserve it. I think uh, it was interesting what you said as well on that text message the other day when you were like you felt stagnant explain that like i was interested what you meant because obviously as a pro rider like what what does it mean when you feel stagnant and stuff a lot of trips i'm a bit of a yes man when it comes to trips and like a lot of trips just fall through this year's been bad for me in terms of trips like i've barely been away not that Mm. i haven't had stuff planned like last year i went away nearly and it was nearly a normal year for me last year whereas this year has been way harder to do stuff so yeah yeah just been at home it's been raining and just uh yeah it came up and i'm very lucky to be able to make it happen to be honest for sure for sure yeah so like but is it does a lot of that responsibility like fall on you as as a pro rider like is what i'm trying to get at so obviously you do filming trips like you just said you do like um tourist board stuff or i don't know whatever you did in uh where were you i can't remember the bloody name of the place indonesia yeah yeah, yeah that sort of stuff, stuff and, all of that know, stuff's obviously... falling off so everything's self-initiated yeah. So it's, so it's all on you. So you've just got to be, you just got to, you know, and I guess. And that is increasingly hard. Like I've had a lot, yeah. a lot of trips fall through, just normal trips really. And, and like something got, like a country goes red and then you're like, you mm. can't go over there and film riding because everything's closed. And then you have to quarantine when you arrive and it turns into a two week trip to go somewhere for four days. Like it's just, it's just yeah. annoying. I can't really complain. It's just annoying. But, but there's no one like on your back, for example, been like, oh, you should go do something. It's all self motivated, right? As as no athlete, one's on my back just... because folk is super cool, but they don't need oh, to yeah, yeah. me. And I know I need to do stuff, really. You know, there's only so yeah. much of the yeah. Surrey Hills I can really, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, totally. No, it's interesting though, isn't it? Because it, it falls on you. And that's what I was trying to get at. You know, it's probably yeah. potentially once you've got to a level where you're ollie wilkins or brendan or whatever you could just be like oh i'll just chill here and rake it in and not rake it in do you know what i mean like you don't have yeah. to go and travel around do you like you could just no you yeah exactly it's all self yeah self uh but then people the more you do the it. more people quickly stop watching yeah uh, that's the key thing you got yeah. you gotta constantly look interesting and and that's the big part yeah. of that game isn't it totally you gotta keep that highlight reel on the old uh, gram aren't you you've got to you have to people tune out <laughs> too right they don't want to see me taking the bins out do they <laughs> i mean yeah I mean, for the last couple of years you've pretty much done that aren't you like buying shit things and <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm pretty much driving around in the bins <laughs> how dare you how dare you <laughs> dude have you been in it yet yeah but yeah i had a whole guided tour of um where did we go I don't know where we went. We went over to the pub, didn't we? And I can't remember. It was, it was nice. Yeah. somewhere. Davey likes the mule. Yeah. I mean, anyone yeah. that goes in it likes it. Like, Actually, you. You oh, haven't, haven't been, been in the mule. mule. You haven't been in the mule. No, you've been in, no. in the. Um, the been in the other one, one, the G-Wag. G-Wag. Yeah. There you go. Oh well, the mule is something else. It is quite <laughs> something, is it? We had a good trip with that. <laughs> hey, we're gonna um, welcome in our um, third guest now. Holy, good Wait, job we're not all on separate, no, separate videos, isn't it? He's the second guest. He's the second guest. Okay. okay. It's Brendan yeah, it's Fairclaw. Everyone, <laughs> let's hear it. Let's hear it, dude. Yeah. Let's hear it. Brandon. Here he is. All right. Can't even see you. All, all right, right dude. dude. Good, good to see you. How's it going? I'm good, mate. How are you? Heard you beat the water. 
You're a regular on this thing now, I guess. Yeah, I might as well host it. You might as well get rid of Ollie now. Yeah, well, mate, we'll chat after this. See who's yeah, cheapest. Right, yeah, sure. sure. <laughs> we probably should have done it live, but we should have done it on uh, on, on the slide. It's not time for negotiations, guys. <laughs> Come on. You've been through the wars, haven't you, mate? You're you sorry. You've been through the wars, haven't you? Yeah, man, been in the wars a little bit, dude. Yeah, took out uh, eight ribs, nice little punctured lung, concussion, fractured shoulder. Yeah. Been in the wars, bro. Is what, sorry? Any long-term damage? Oh, I don't know. We'll wait and wait and see, <laughs> to be honest. But no, uh, hopefully not, man. I think the lung's going to take a little bit of time to heal. I think that was, you know, it had multiple um, heat... I can't remember what they call it. Hem- hematorax, I think it's called, where it's punctured in multiple places with blood on it and air inside it. So um, it's a weird feeling, I'll be honest. I don't know if you've, you probably have had a lung go down on you before, a, a, a flat tyre. Not. Oh. No, no. Well, t- lungs, touch, touch wood as well, he, mate. He it didn't happen. today, though. Yeah, I'll punch it today. That's pretty yeah. bad. Oh, really? Oh, mate, I think stick to the wheel punctures rather than the lung punctures for sure. It's a weird feeling, the lung one, because it feels like you, I don't know, you, insides aren't working properly. Like you breathe in and you, I can feel it all on one side and not the right hand side properly yet Very I heard strange. someone say the other day like breaking a rib is the same pain as puncturing a lung so you just don't know what you've done like, it's the same pain right. Right? and uh, I did a shoot in Madeira for a dog's life shoot last year or the year before and I hit a tree pretty good on my, on my shoulder and cracked some ribs and blah blah but I was just yeah. we were miles away from anywhere and I was just like shit is this like a punctured lung in the middle of nowhere or is this just some broken ribs or whatever but yeah I mean I can't imagine what eight's like so yeah yeah it's decent I think there's always that feeling isn't it when you get winded as well I think we spoke about this Ollie like you get winded and inside you you know okay I'm just winded but my your brain's going yeah but this could be the one where you've actually you're actually dying <laughs> like this one this one could be the one it's yeah, you know, G's kind of like taking your limelight a bit, like so done. Oh, oh mate, definitely, definitely. And a femur, yeah, and he's the face. Pissed. Oh, I saw them. I'll be like a bit pissed off then, really. Dude, I'll be like, oh, I'll be like, 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 I'll not like, I'll be like, I'll be like, I'll be like, I'll be like, I'll uh, they don't know whether to is put it? it in the edit because it's it's oh because he ragdolls for so long. You know, you, yeah. it's real hard to show like how steep something is in video, but when you've got like mm. an unconscious body ragdolling, it kind God. of puts it across pretty good. But yeah, I don't know I think, if they're yeah. going to put it in the final thing. It's pretty shocking, actually. Yeah. Yeah, I think the bit he released so far is just the start of it, that fall. But his like GoPro like chest camera, you can tell he ragdolls for ages. So long. It's shocking. Yeah. yeah. Just, Just over rocks, rocks and yeah, yeah. Ugh. yeesh, dude. He's an animal. Fair play to the guy, still up and out. I mean, yeah, I think his was like a week or two before mine. So to see him up and walking already and stuff is like fucking hell. Yeah, and a, fe- and a femur and a compound yeah. fractured arm. All right, Jesus Christ. All right, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just lazy I think I'm just getting into it now I saw him at uh, Hardline I saw him walking about and I was like he looks absolutely fine he's so bad but he's like naturally like muscular and vascular and yeah this like, yeah. looks like he can heal real quick where's the vital that's through? one of the things as well right that I'm finding with this injury and no doubt you've been, been through this yourselves you start seeing your body change and it's really weird yeah, because especially after I've not been injured for years, and like all of a sudden I'm like, okay, I'm losing like definition in my legs, and like I'm starting to look a bit tubby. It's kind of shit. Yeah, <laughs> you can't do it? anything about like, it. Naturally, quite like withered and like a bit of crap. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I'll go to the gym, and like I haven't really trained that much this year. It's like it's no, it's no secret. But I like go back to the gym with Ollie, and I'm not far off my numbers from when I trained hard in the gym. So my body just stays a little bit withered, but still like, it's either like withered and strong or like withered and half strong. So like, it's annoying. Like I see Pete, my brother, will go to the gym for like a, two weeks. And he's yeah. like, wow, look at that. Like my, my bicep's like growing by two inches. And I'm like, you prick, you don't even need a bicep. <laughs> you hammer. don't need a bicep. No, I need that. You don't need that. And, what, so uh, yours just doesn't change? No, no, I don't, I, my body doesn't really change. I'm like... like Proper dad body. Tiny, like, a little bit, like, 
strong, but like not like not like chiselled. You know, it's just like a bit. Not like his mechanic. Mechanics, like, just yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Fair, that's a fair point. Fair so, point. We've he seen just, it. Like, drinks beers and eats chocolate bars, and then I mean, he is literally super weak, but looks chiselled. <laughs> So that's fine. I'd, I'd happily have the looks over the strength, you know. And then you got, you got a middle guy who's just What's like the middle guy? chiseled and strong. That is chilling. The middle guy <laughs> chilling. <laughs> I snooze. I should start snoozing. You go quite well on a bicycle, though, don't you? I'm gonna start snoozing. Though. Blows my mind, dude. You should blows start blows snoozing. Blows my mind. Yeah. Let's talk about today, won't we? Yeah. In chocolate, yeah. <laughs> he does go very <laughs> quick. At, yeah. He does go very quick at biking, though. You do go very yeah. quick at biking. I can't work out for the life of me how. No, I think it's he just, just uh, you know, just kind of. I think it's this good hand-eye coordination. Mm, that I think that's what it is. Super dumb as well. That yeah, I think that's more yeah. I think good at maths and hand-eye coordination. That's what you put down yeah, the speed yeah. to. Yeah, just because it's numbers going through like rocks, trees, calculating it all. Really, yeah. Trigonometry. Do you? Yeah. Do your? Does your eyesight look like? The Matrix almost. It's like, just you know, numbers. like you look through like Terminator goggles, it's like that. Yeah. yeah. Is exactly. it really? Yeah, yeah. Like, zzz, rock yeah, calculating. Just like, you know, should I break that? No, I actually don't think I'll break. And once you start thinking about your breaking points, game over. Like, we've got a friend from home and he's, he like breaks in the <laughs> middle of corners. And this is like the worst trait you could ever do on a, on a bike, I think, because you, like, your bike stands up, you like, yeah. aim towards the tree that you don't want to go to a tyre is extremely good at doing one job at a time and it can break extremely well and it can turn extremely well but once you put that tyre through two things it's, it's crap like you can't turn and break a tyre can't do it so that's like the mm. thing like as soon as you start thinking about your braking points you start thinking oh my pulling brakes too much whatever done, done might as well pack the bike into a box and go in mate really, what an amazing tip like, yeah, right just there. sell it. Just and drop just in knowledge. Buy a tennis racket or something. Really? Yeah, you reckon that's just golf club? If you can't work out breaking points, literally give up. <laughs> it's, give not, up. it's not a good <laughs> message, really, to our listeners. No, I'm only joking. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, that's a really good thing to think about as you tie it. But then again, what I just said, don't think about when you ride, just ride. But you tie can't do two things at once. But yeah. Maybe know, maybe you are smart. No. Maybe you are smart. I think of you as a nice sort of like um, a nice accident. Like you could have taken, <laughs> up, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean. You could have taken yeah. up a number of different things. Yeah. You could have. You could yeah. have taken up, and, and you would have just been sort of middle of the road. Just I don't a think bit so, like, no. Yeah, you would have. No, I'm one of those. Guys. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah. I think this is just the stars aligned. Like, Wait, I think you just put play for a cricket county team. Yeah, you yeah. just put the work in, and you're going to get there. Really? Just fill up the water bottles. For... Did you just go to school together as well, then? No. Ollie went. Did you a, not? Ollie went to a well. Uh... <laughs> you can't, because then no. if I. No, we all no, went. We, we all went to He's rubbish schools. He's a couple schools. years older than me. <laughs> that's like a thing that that's like a thing that we do we stitch each other up because you can't argue afterwards because it makes you more incriminated. So if you're like, yeah. now Ollie went to a private school. And then the other person goes, I, I, I go, no, I didn't. It makes me look more like yeah. I did. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So I doubt you went to a private school, though. Huh? Ollie, I doubt you went to a private school. What no, makes I you didn't. doubt that? Why would you My say man that? man right there. What? what uh, I mean, every conversation we've ever had, really, about money makes me think that, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> there you what, go. How yeah. do you mean? Like, he can't manage it. Like, he doesn't have any money. What do you mean? No, you're rich. <laughs> no. I just think oh, he got, <laughs> got me on the show. I can't believe this. Unreal. Dude, we've actually got oh, another dear. guest. We've got another guest. Steph's here. And Steph yeah. okay. had an accident today and it involved a lot of blood. <laughs> oh, oh, shit, really? really? So, yeah, so Steph, real. check this out on the video to audio Say listeners. Hello, I'm going to make this way gnarly on to audio listeners. Literally, his skin's yeah. peeled back on his skullington. You, and you can see his skullington inside that. I think, I think I saw, for a moment, a little bit of brain. No. And it's because... No brain. No brain. Holy. He no. doesn't reckon it was brain. You don't reckon? No, Jeez, no. big one. More hair in there. <laughs> oh, okay. Basically, poor Steph walked into a truck. <laughs> <laughs> it was unfortunate. I nearly did it afterwards, knowing that it was there. But Not even a bike, bike in trash. trash. You know, like Not even a bike trash. in trash. The the bits that yeah. pop out, they're yeah. really dangerous. 
I think yeah. you got away with right. it, dude. But it is also a truck, and it is really big. So yeah, trucks like, don't move. Walk, walking into a truck, I mean, it's tight. Yeah, quite a big thing to like not see. <laughs> it is, yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> natural white background yeah the white background being the sky so you know it is, it is uh, tough, it's tough. <laughs> it's tough. they'll catch you out won't they those trucks they'll, they'll catch, catch you out, out. the trucks will poor, so poor Steph but he made up for it because he's done a full day of riding horrible steep stuff behind Bren flailing down yeah <laughs> bloody good bloody good but like you say it's like terminated goggles and you're calculating everything yeah but you're actually laughing when you're doing it. So what can you explain a bit about that, maybe? <laughs> you know, I don't like this. Like you, laughing because you're nearly hitting trees and like wait, smashing rocks. If you had a downlight, like, you could go as fast as me. But you Is it though? Refuse to do it. Is it though? No, you refuse to do it. Now we had a wicked time today, actually, you and did. we're all on different bikes. Everyone's on different bikes, and we all had a cracking time. And that just goes to show how capable a smaller bike is, really, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, we're not going the same speed. Agreed. So in that higher car. You got how many bikes did you get in that hire car in the end? Four. I'm not Three. enough to have my race bike already on the truck, so I didn't have to fly with one. So the okay. boys all took a bike, so we had four people and three bikes. And some tape. Right. Okay. And luggage. And, and some, some what? And luggage. And, and luggage. luggage. Tape. But actually, these boys have to bring a lot of like spares and stuff, so the luggage is quite a lot, like, yeah, for the race. Yeah, there is actually yeah. work yeah. going on here. I, I seem to sort of. I guess they just weren't. They just weren't banking on bringing a spare person with them. I and mean, I now you say that. Now, whole, yeah, like, oh, are you a bit of a third wheel? You, you you could say oh, I fucked up the whole trip. Yeah, you could. Well, we just see on Sunday, and if I do bad, then it's all his fault, sir. So. <laughs> 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 what like? Historically, do you do better when Ollie's at the races or worse, would you say? I think I've had eight World Cup podiums. You might have been there for four, huh? I've been to a few, yeah. yeah. Good, good few, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Let's get so, your mate around here. Yeah, it's yeah, been yeah, good. Loosen like, things up a little bit. I don't know. When the lads, when the lads <laughs> yeah. are there, the thing is I'm like quite old now, so I don't have that many friends at World Cup, so bring, you've got to bring them all in and hype it up. So it's good. And yeah. like, oh. people that ride World Cups are so serious. <laughs> They, is it really? Yeah, it's like back in the day, back in my day, it used to be well <laughs> funny, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, it did. Did yeah. you ever have you ever laughed on a race run? Do you reckon? No, but I've been sick of my helmet on a race run at Marable. And it was here. Yeah, talk us through it. Um, me and Sam Hill were on a team <laughs> together. Specialized, I think it was. Must have been specialized. And uh, uh, we qualified first and second at this race. And we used to have a like routine. We'd just like lie down in the team truck, just in between practice and race run on Sunday morning. And our team manager, Sean, used to like give us a little nudge to wake us up, and then we'd have like lunch and this and another. But he, for some reason, forgot or what happened or whatever. So we woke up late from our little afternoon nap. And we woke up and we were like, "Shit, our runs in like an hour. We haven't had any food. Like what? You know, we're like kids, like just trying to organise ourselves." So we ran straight to the restaurant at the bottom of the hill and just scoffed down a massive speed. Actually, like, and you boys can back me up, the portions are massive. Yeah, they are big. Yeah. The portions are massive, <laughs> which, I mean, doesn't matter because we could have only chose to eat half of it. We're scoffing down the spaghetti bolognese. And then we go up for a run. And it's just me and Sam at the top before our run because we want a turbo trainer. And everyone else has gone, and I qualified second, Sam qualified first. So we're both like on the train and next to each other, spirited bolognese around our mouths and stuff. <laughs> Just like on the train and going, going at it. And then I go down and halfway down my run, like I'm obviously exerting myself trying as hard as I can. Like I, I sick up some spaghetti bolognese into my helmet and I've got it in my mouth, split second decision, do I try to swallow it or just stop? <laughs> so I just spat it out into my helmet. And um, yeah, and this is the same run where Sam went off the track into a bush, um, (laughs) picked his bike out of the bush, got back on his bike, and then kept on riding and got fit. No way. uh, Yeah, I think G or Greg won. Then I got third. And then, don't know who got fourth, and then Sam got fifth with a massive crash. So Sam would have cleaned (laughs) up, but... um, 
Did you bring the ball of spaghetti onto the podium? No, it was just like all in my, <laughs> all, in my all in the grate in the front of my helmet, and just like a pit round my. Uh, <laughs> just a bit. It wasn't like the full bolognese stick. It was like a good, just like a mouthful. Do you, but you don't really chew much, do you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I can't remember if there's any like put long bits of spaghetti in the stick, or is it yeah. just like? But they were sick, like dribbling. Yeah, down just you, like yeah. sick in my in <laughs> my uh, jaw piece, and just a bit just around my <laughs> yeah, around. yeah, about around my Standard neck. Standard issue, really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. 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 tough to clean out of that mouthpiece grill as well. Forgotten about, and just uh, even uh, an hour after the race, I was like, oh yeah, I was sick in my helmet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There we go. Nice. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I need, I need to. to um, yeah. I need to listen to that Sam Hill podcast that Jay's did with him. Gypsy Tales. Jay's did one with Sam. I've not heard it yet, but apparently it's really good because obviously Sam doesn't talk that often to media, does he? So I bet it is. He's, he's an interesting dude, isn't he? I, I mean, you spent obviously a lot of time with him. Yeah, well, I mean, we have. We've had yeah. some amazing. We uh, obviously, well, obviously, was a teammate for many years. So we managed to get him over to my house a couple of times. We used to have good good like parties of mine and we used to get him over and get get him uh get him loose at some parties of mine we've got some wicked stories that i mean half of me literally can't tell to anyone but yeah he's actually <laughs> the funniest guy yeah. and it does i was gonna say i bet he's not an introvert like he comes across right like he comes across as really introverted but but, but um he's just got amazing sense of humor yeah. and you get a few beers down and he gets a bit more comfortable he's obviously with a load of people he didn't know but also, a really good Sam Hill story is we had a pump track at my house and me and Ollie must have done a thousand laps on it. We've done yes. every single Level. possible, triple, double, manual, <laughs> this, that and the other you can ever mention. And we're, we're the absolute dog's bollocks around this pump track. There's no better. Yeah. <laughs> Back then, I really thought, yeah, this and is, then, it doesn't and get then better than this. teammate this is... Sam Hill turns up. He's been at my house for half a day and he's literally like, check this out pushes his bike up to a weird part of the garden that I've never seen before, cranks <laughs> in and jumps this big triple on the pump track and we're just like, for God's sake. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, it is. It is uh, I mean, you don't see him on a hardtail much or anything and you just like, you just think, back then he was just like the absolute man, wasn't he, winning races by five, ten seconds every race, but yeah, yeah. he just showed us, didn't he? We were like, yeah. Oh. I remember going to a set of trails and these trails go around the corner. And yeah. if you go to a set of trails, you just generally, you, you look at them first, right? Yeah. I'm, I always try and go through first run, yeah. but I've always looked at them first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, and you see, cause you don't know what's coming up, do you? You don't, a, a set of dirt jumps can start like tiny gaps yeah. and end massive. Yeah. yeah. And Sam's just pushed straight up to Which the rolling. Was? Sheep. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's pushed straight up to the roll, and there's not a set of trails that you don't look at because it's like down a valley. And he probably hasn't ridden trails for like five years. No. And I was kind of <laughs> thinking, fuck it. I'd, you, you naturally think, well, he's going to be good at down it. He can't be good at everything. Yeah. He can't, he can't <laughs> be, dude. He's, every dog has its day. We've got to be better than yeah. the trails. He dropped in and he one banged a set of trails, like technical set of trails, 90 degree hits. Wow. Crap style, but he got through it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give him that. Well, <laughs> I'm sure the style got better as the day went on, though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there we go. Maybe yeah, it's That's a he's, a good, he's a good boy. I was trying to think on the fly, like a cool yeah. feature we can do, and maybe you can okay. help me, David, because you've got good ideas. Yeah, yeah because, because we've, we've not, not prepared again. No, for this have we? You know, it's didn't know that we'd have yeah, guests. Yeah, just going on the online, just raw like this. Yeah, dude. Yeah, we pretty much do it every week. Same, what I was thinking thing. is some sort of question and answer thing that we can do between a World Cup rider and his mechanic and see if the yeah. answers are different. You know, okay. I don't know how we're going to do yeah. this. Oh, no. <laughs> That's a great idea. I love that. That's a really good idea. It's not a good um, idea. Yeah. So how are we going to how are we going to do that, though? How are we going to do it? Could we... Um, uh... well, let's, let's see if the, uh, if the answers are... Let's, do, let's try one, for instance... I'll try try this one. Brendan, are you quite careful with your bike, would you say? No. And then Mike, Mike. Is Brendan careful? <laughs> That's backfired. <laughs> okay, all right. I like that. You it's a good idea. idea. I like it. It's a good, it's a good feature. feature. Yeah, I can't think of any off the fly, really, here. But we can't have any sure technical can... questions either, because neither of us really know anything that technical. Really? <laughs> no, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm good at pumping the tyres up. Like, 
<laughs> like doing Alan from Volta. It's just, you know. And, and we do, just so the viewers know, like every run we do them up like a quarter of a turn every, after every run. So yeah. They're really, really tight and then they snap and then new one, new bolt gets put. <laughs> yeah, there you, go. there you go. Okay, I've got a question though for Mike. Far away. World Cup mechanic is going to be at the top of a lot of people's wish list as like a dream job. Mike, how did you get into it? And um, obviously, what's it like working with someone like Brendan? Well, luckily for me, he's like one of my oldest and best friends. So for me, like without blowing smoke up his ass, it's actually really nice, like really good job. And he's super chilled and laid back. But he's a nightmare with organisation. So it's just kind of lastminute.com. But it's cool. We've learned to go with it. Um, yeah, all right. But it is, it is super cool. Like... I mean, today, for example, we've we've flown out and we've been able to ride trail bikes all day. Um, and I know that I'll have some work to do on Thursday and it's all good. Like, we'll make it happen and it, it'll go fast. But, yeah, very, yeah. very fortunate. If, if, like, if anyone wanted to get into being a World Cup mechanic, how would someone go about introducing themselves to a team or a rider? Like, is there, like, a, a natural progression other than befriending them and being mates there must there be other ways, ways of getting into, getting into it 10 years <laughs> 20 years yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, they haven't had I never got the, I never got the invite dude weird hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, I think you you have to like you need some background for sure like you you don't just oh, I've been spannering on my own bike and I could be your mechanic kind of thing. You get a name for yourself and, you know, we have our shop, MB Cyclery. So um, when we bought that, it was a conversation that was had and um, it was like the the best thing we could do really. Like, I mean, what bike shop doesn't mm-hmm. want to be uh, putting their name to, to a World Cup rider? Um, huge sure, exposure sure. for us and it's like super cool that I get to hang out with my friend on a, on a you know, his job, you know. Um, yeah. got, were I've you doing the World Cup mechanic in before you bought the shop or is it no 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 the other way around? Uh, Ben my my business partner so the B of MB he had done a mm. season with Bernard season or two maybe uh, with Bernard Kerr so right. um, he had a bit of experience he had the chat with Bren and that's kind of how it all came about like it was kind of like well you know you guys have a local shop um, why don't we make this work uh, so it did. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. What would be something that's unique to a world? What's the most important thing in being a World Cup mechanic? Would you say compared to like your everyday, you know, your your everyday mechanic? What would you say you've learned from being a World Cup mechanic? To try and like keep things super chill. Like you don't want to be stressing your rider. Um, yeah. yeah. And. You know that's not always easy for all of us to to do and and be like, so yeah, <laughs> you you have to learn to be able to be super positive all the time as well. Um, so you know if something breaks, you you got to know that you're going to be able to fix it real quick and be like positive about the outcome of that. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think hanging out with is Brent, it a lot more. What's kind of cool though with being I, I guess out doing what you guys do is it's you. Do you fix many things or do you just fit new? Because this is like, because I did something not similar, but kind of similar with a with a Supercross rider. And when they got to a certain point, it was like, okay, we don't have to repair anything anymore. We just, let's say, I don't know, you break a, a brake lever. There's no more straightening it out. It's like, boom, new one on. So, unfortunately, you know I mean? it is kind of like a disposable society, really. Um, so, yes, a lot of parts will just get replaced. Um, Mm. sometimes we do some like cool little things that, that, um, you know, you wouldn't ordinarily do for everyone, but because it's like world cup level, you know, things like taking seals out of stuff to make things roll quicker, you know, like you don't want friction from a rubber seal. So you can't do that to a customer because it, you know, their hub's going to clog up with dirt and fail way, way, way quicker. But because we service the hub almost every run you know, it makes more sense for us to do that. So, you know, there's some cool yeah. little stuff that we get to do like that, you know. Mike, uh, tell yeah, the viewer sure. uh, how many um, wheels we took to our uh, Canada and uh, America trip last year. We had like six spares, so. so you, you like? <laughs> uh, maybe. 
Are you live? Uh, maybe. We, uh, <laughs> we flew to Mount St. Anne and to yeah. then we went from Mount St. Anne World Cup. Then we drove on to um, Wyndham, um, not Wyndham, um, uh, Snowshoe. Snowshoe. And right. we packed a spare rim, but we packed the wrong size rim. So we did, and we had no spare wheels. So we did <laughs> two World Cups on the same set of wheels, like throughout the week. And if we'd, if I'd broken a rim, no idea what we would, would, would have done. No way. I think in the last like whole, I don't think there's any rider in the last twenty years of World Cups has ever turned up to race with with no spare wheels. <laughs> <laughs> and we did it, and we got through all weeks, which, it, without plugging too many people, is is a uh, you know amazing that that Maxis and and Envy, but um yeah, every sing like it makes me laugh every time that we're just at the top. Mike's just got his toolbox, no spare wheels, or anything. <laughs> yeah, fuck it, this hey, is cool. How many spares? So you took that experience and you learned from it. Right? Yeah. So how many spares do you have now? One. Oh, one. Yeah. Okay. One. <laughs> Can I just say, because I have every faith in how smooth and how calculated his riding Riders, style yeah. is. Uh, yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's that uh, Terminator phase. Terminator eyes, right? Yeah. But um, yeah, I found that so funny. I was just like, my whole career, I've just had like truck full of spare bits and just like, this all sorts of bits everywhere. We, you know, we fortunate being world cup race like that you have a truck full of bits like as you, as you mm. should really but because yeah. of the nature of how their program works is the team are on slightly different sponsors to what we're on so we have to bring our own like cranks and our own wheels and our own bars and stem or whatever because we're on slightly different sponsors to the team but um right. slight miscommunication whatever ended up not bringing wheels to america so we just had one set <laughs> on my bike for the whole time but i mean it worked and <laughs> you know, a testament to, to the product. But um yeah, that was uh, a slight a slight um a slight F up, I'd say. But um, <laughs> it was funny though because it was like you looked at me and said, You bought the spare, right? And yeah. I looked at you and I was like, No, I thought you did. Yeah. And it is kinda of like one of those moments. Classic. Yeah. Yeah, and then you <laughs> know, and fun. then at some point we were like looking around the back of like other team we we're like, right, what other teams have they have M V wheels? They were like looking around the back of their team pits to see if they've like got any like broken ones or whatever around there we could rebuild or whatever. But we didn't need to, so it's good. But yeah, I mean that's, that's a, it's the it's a cool dynamic and uh, we we you know we're we're not at the pointy pointy end, but we you know we're in the mix definitely, and it's like it's amazing just to be at, be at the races again and and just you know and I like I love the process of turning up, walking the track, and then you've got practice, you've got to get through practice, and you've got time runs, and you, you've got to, you know, it's always good to have like a nice time in the time run, um, regardless mm-hmm. of if it's a whole run or your splits, you know, it's good as an athlete to see where you're at. And then the next then the next step is to get through qualifying, then the next step is to get through the finals, and it's just like a whole routine. Well, dude, you've and, been doing it since yeah, I you know, were fucking like, 15. Like, it's insane and, to think. Yeah, yeah. And it's long, long time. Process. And like what I was saying the other day, is like we could, I was actually speaking to Steph on the plane, it's like, if I get 10th these days, it's a great result for me, like the whole team's cool, excited, whatever, I'm going to, I'll probably shout about it on my Instagram like I've won the race, you know, but um, it could be, and I could be at the top of a second and I could be like the first one on that second I'll get 10th super happy stoked if I'm at the bottom of that second and I get 23rd 23rd then we'll say 24th I'm going to walk away <laughs> from that weekend like pretty pissed off angry with my performance like want to sell my bike take up a new profession for a couple of days after that don't like, do it dude don't yeah like I'm pissed off but no, you've got to crazy. think over a three or four minute time I'm like <laughs> At the bottom of a second or at the top of a second, and that could completely define how the feeling is at the end of the day, and that's like a bit of a shit yeah. thing. So, yeah, and regardless of your race, you're still going to have that feeling um, when you get 24th or you get 10th. You're going to be stoked with 10th, but yeah. you're going to get 24th, you're going to be pissed off. And what is the time difference mm. between 24th yeah, I mean, that's and what I mean. first? That's like so second. fucking. If you're the top of a second yeah. or the bottom of a yeah, second. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And I, you go back and you run, and you can't do anything about it because you've done your best. But that's just like that. That's what I don't like about it. But now, mm. like, if you come out of a weekend, I, I did a, two years ago. I did a lot of race runs where I get down to the bottom, 
and I had nothing to talk about my run. My run was drama free. It was like, and I'd get like 20th or 30th and I'd be like, well, I think my run is pretty good. So what I wanted to make sure is that either I crash and burn or I come down and I've had, I put my all into it and I've had a couple of moments and I'm feeling good about myself, which is what I've had, what I've done this year, which is good because the feeling of coming yeah. down then every other rider pips in front of you and you just think to yourself, shit, could I have done a lip? Like getting, having a good run and getting 30th, I'd 100% have rather have gone over the bars in the rock garden 30 miles an hour because at least it's like I didn't get to the bottom and I've had the best run and I've got 30th. Mm. It's like a weird feeling to to tell you, but it's like that's the truth. Like you, I don't know, yeah. it's weird. So I just want to make sure that you either, I'm either pushing it or huge one yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> just all or nothing <laughs> yeah there you go wow wow well, i mean that's just wow. you know that's just being honest i think that all races yeah. Like that. yeah 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 fucking... and mike what do you prefer do you prefer leaving it out on the track or <laughs> or bring it or bringing the bike home safely <laughs> i just i want him to be happy like sounds yeah. super lame but i, I there's nothing better than when he comes back to the pits and he's got a big grin on his face and like he's he's been happy with what he's done. Yeah. Like mm. you can't beat that feeling when you just have no. everyone's got good vibes at the pits. It's just you know that that's yeah. how it is. It's yeah. Funny racing's weird, isn't it? Hmm. It is pointless, really, but fun. It's good, mate. It, it, <laughs> it is a strange uh, strange way to make a living, isn't it? When you really think about it, <laughs> you know. You're out there racing bikes and, uh, yeah, I don't know, it's a, it is a weird thing. Three, you know? four minutes at a time. It's insane, isn't it? Yeah. Just like your life's just three, four minutes at a time, like. Yeah. I get, we used to always do that with the Speedway stuff when we were out, you know, I went, when I was a Speedway mechanic, you'd be like, I don't know, let's say when I worked for Ty, you'd come away and he'd earn, I don't know, let's just say five grand, for example. And then you add up how much you'd actually ridden the bike. You're like, you've been on the bike for less than four minutes tonight. Like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's it's mental. Obviously, there's a lot of travel got in and stuff like that. But when you really boil it down, it's like, how much have you actually ridden that bike? You've done five heats. I wonder about Eight, stress, you know, you know like six, stress levels and effort, whether the, yeah. a normal job has the same stress. That a normal job has stress, but it's spread over like yeah, 365 maybe, yeah. days. And then if you've got 12 races... And the preparation for those twelve races, whether it's like compressed yeah, stress, it's not like just the race is stress. You're stressing weeks before yeah. preparing for it and wondering, and and then you actually there is mm-hmm. post stress as well. Yeah, like you're annoyed at your result. You're like, how? What? What could I have done more? This, that, and the other, and like, should I? Should I even bother? You know, there's yeah. that goes to your health. You know, it's like it's tons, but yeah. If you got better at just like forgetting about a bad run, for example, um, like can you just leave it? Yeah, and like. No, fortunately, I've got like other things. You know, it's like I I always tell the joke that at a race, at a World Cup race, I'm not a free rider, and at a free ride event, I'm a racer. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> oh shit, like the, the racer did good at the free rider at free ride event. And <laughs> if I had a shit result at the World Cup, and just like, yeah, I've been working on my free ride shit. So, <laughs> so that, yeah, get free card. And like, if you do crap at both, of them, I just. <laughs> Try to do a good film segment. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, yeah, I just know, shift some like, merch. Oh, Everyone's happy. <laughs> oh, fortunate there's a couple of strings to my bow, which is like I can mentally like fall back on and think, oh, okay, well, just you know that didn't work, so well, we try harder at the next one or whatever. But equally, yeah, it works both ways. It's like if I if I have a if I have a good result at World Cup, I think shit. If I just put all my efforts and all my eggs in that basket, could I still be? podium in world cups or if i put all my eggs mm. in the free ride basket uh, not now actually no, i actually don't think about that but free ride i just go and have fun and bloody blah, blah but definitely racing i do i think oh shit if i if i did put all my eggs in one basket could i still be at the pointy pointy end but i don't know i, I mm. there's zero regrets on what i've done and what i'm doing and sounds cringy like it but we just we're uh, having a good time and like today for example we turn up at world cup and and we do have a job to do but we just had yeah, good yeah. fun just ripping down runs and a few beers at the end of the day and yeah it's good but yeah mate for sure for sure yeah, yeah. I think that's how you've got to keep it now surely yeah. like you just got to keep it fun keep enjoying the process yeah. right i do i do hate that 
um, thing where it's just like, yeah, you've got to have fun. Because I think that um, it's a job and that's how I've always taken it. And it's like, I always say, if you enjoy like 50% of your job, or 50% of the time that you're doing your job is still more than 99% of the whole world's population that have a job. Like we're so fortunate. Yeah. So I do, I do love to crack down and do shit stuff as well. That I don't want to do because I, I know it's my job and I know that's that, that's gonna that's gonna bring longevity to it. So that's what I would just say mm. to myself. If I even if I enjoy fifty percent of my job, it's more than a lot of people. You know, which makes me feel fortunate. So yeah, I don't know. That's, that's yeah. how I think. But um, yeah, like yeah, it's a really good way of looking at it. Really, really good way of looking, at it. Really, so really good way of looking at it. But the end result is cool, and you've got something to whatever so anyway, yeah that's that so um just quickly as well rampage it's on i've just seen it's just gone out right now like the rider list everything so you're, you're lighting up o-dub so that's good <laughs> i have to get out there on the spades <laughs> yeah well i've heard he's dropped he, you know he said i'd be coming out there but he says he's gonna look for like if there's a better offer yeah, yeah, yeah. so he's gonna like okay he's gonna do like yeah. a, kind of like an x factor kind yeah, of like, setup like you know like you're in it provisionally now if I yeah. can't find anyone better, but yeah. Yeah, so what would okay. you better, like, strong? So is Deeks a, is Deeks is a short in. in? Yeah, definitely, because he's, like, super, it's very simple with Deeks. You give him the pickaxe, and he pickaxes a rock for two days. Hmm. Whereas he answers <laughs> back and says, oh, mate, yeah, I, think, I think you can jump a big, bit bigger than that. Or like, I think how about about, yeah. we do a double flip over the canyon? Yeah, like a bit more consultancy yeah. role, whereas he doesn't <laughs> want me. He just yeah. wants me on the pick. <laughs> <laughs> so just show up and keep digging it. Yeah. It's simple. <laughs> you said it. I'm not my well, words. I'm pretty sure those words came out of your mouth. <laughs> no, definitely not. But we, we have an amazing team. Um, and to to actually blow smoke up Ollie's ass, I couldn't have done it the last years without because it's like we've ridden together our whole life. I've got a tear in my eye actually in here. But we've, got, we've, <laughs> ridden, we've ridden together our whole life, and uh, we know our sort of capabilities, and we're both as dumb as each other, and and as skillful as each other in the same way. So if I say, oh, Ollie, do you think we can get over there? There's, it's either going to go, no way, it's stupid, move on. I'm sorry, okay, we'll move on. Or I think we can maybe do that. So then it's like, then we mm. work together on something. And it's the same with like speed, running for speed and this and the other. And, and there's no bullshit going on, which is good. It's like, if I say, Ollie, I think I could flip over that canyon. If if I couldn't, Ollie's just going to go, dude, you're way too crap. Mate, it's so you gnarly to think you can't you, get over that. If you weren't friends, yeah, then and you didn't really know the bloke, then what would be stopping you just being like, yeah, you fuck, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I'd love to see that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I hate on, any all of it. I'm pretty confident. Like the yeah. flip was one of the worst things we've done. I would say that was yeah. that's most horrible. That and it, and it feels bad actually if you're like digging and you feel yeah. like. Because it's, I was 50 50. Yeah. I'm on, I, I'm really, if I'm I feel on, like you were digging a grave at some points. I thought I pictured every crash you could have had. Yeah. I'm sure you pictured yeah, more. Yeah, yeah. But I was just kind of thinking, you know, this is fucking, you know, it's your mate. You just think, well, this is all pointless. All the hoo ha helicopters, loudspeakers. You just yeah. sort of don't, you don't really care about, if it's your mate, you don't care, do no. you? I'd rather, I'd rather you didn't flip over the canyon, yeah. I'll be honest. Given the choice, that, but out of everything else, I think we yeah we couldn't really tell you that. Before, no, could I? But then <laughs> no. when I first did Rampage, I dug a big, big canyon gap, which is the biggest one I've ever done still to date. And I didn't right. do it that year because I um, snapped my ACL. So the following, oh. so the following, so that was still lingering in my head for a year. And I was like, okay, I'm we're going to go back and I bring Ollie with me, and we're going to get to the canyon. This is another canyon years ago, 2015 or whatever. I'm going to get to the canyon and he's going to go, dude, that's completely ridiculous. Let's move on. And that's what I was hoping for. Got there. Mm. Ollie's like, yep, I think we can, you know, make some little little arrangements here and change that. And I reckon you can get over there. And you just like, Phew. yeah. And I was just like, that is not what I wanted to hear, man. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it made it, it worked and it's cool. And like, it's just been, you know, it's, it's uh Rampage family, we do, and even though even though it is like hard work, early mornings, late nights, grafting in the sun, there's such a cool sense of achievement at the end, and it is like a real family vibe. And you get to the end, and you just like driving out the desert, and just like ah, I got that job done. Don't we? Yeah. That's cool, yeah. But and I, I, I do sick. remember every like speaking to Brandon Semenek at the top, and we were both sitting at the top before our runs, 
and we looked at like the wiggly fire road out of the desert and we both looked at each other and were like, imagine how good it's going to be sitting in the truck, drinking a beer, driving out that <laughs> fire road at the end of the day. And Funny we were both thing, like laughing at each other. Yeah. Like, I can't wait for that. This is so shit sitting at the top. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good example of yeah. like, contrast, isn't it? Yeah, like all... It's not that good unless it's that shit also. I always remember that because you just think like Brandon is just like probably not scared, got everything done. Yeah. But everyone feels the same. And, and the same yeah. as like uh, I read something where James Stewart was sitting on the start line every race. And he was just thinking on the start line every race. I wish I was just in an office job or doing anything else apart yeah. from sitting on the start line right now with these thirty nine other crazy guys. And you think, yeah, and, and it's so strange how he's pieced out of that sport too, isn't yeah, it? Like I know. he literally just the disappeared. Feel like that, but they do. Yeah, so, uh, no, right? Yeah, so, yeah, it's a weird one. That is just yeah. pieced out. See you later. I mean, he could have left such a cool legacy if he'd not gone out like that. I mean, no doubt he did in a way, but at the same time, I mean, I, I still want to see him it. around. Like, it's fucking James Stewart. He I invented know. the scrub. Like, well, I want to see him. I think it's just sick out. because, you know, like in, in boxing, where, where someone can't just let go undefeated. Yeah. They they keep going until it goes down. Yeah. Under. I think Bob yeah. did it right. I think it's sick. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Who knows? Um, it's a different so location, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be like, t- still turning up at World Cups at 40, not qualifying yeah. any single one. You're going to be like, Deeks getting, getting taken out of nightclub. Don't yeah, you? Right <laughs> <now>. <laughs> Just naked. No, I'll have no hair left, so I'll be bald and grey and still like... <laughs> Just naked and dragged out of that club. Five oh, bounces. Used to be good. <laughs> Let me in. <laughs> crap his clothes as well. I just sold out. I just like, I'm like, well, I can't mention any crap clothes around here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Rampage is a different location, though, isn't it? I think. Is that right? Yeah, I think it's 25 different miles hill. away from the original site. There's no longer in Virgin Utah, which wow. has been for the last 19 years. So it's wow. a yeah, completely different zone. So that that makes us that makes us excited as well because it's like going to the same spot, same bars, same you know eating establishment, yeah. same drive in, same drive out, same coffee shop. You know, the coffee shop's nice. So we'll probably go to the same coffee shop. Yeah, but yeah. Just the whole routine of it is cool and nice, but just a completely new arrangement is going to be going to be cool and helps us because when you go back to a location for the second time it means everyone has more time to manicure their jumps and landings and everything it turns more into a slope style competition where you mm. go there new new venue everything's raw you don't get much time every competitor only gets 75 sandbags you're only allowed two diggers no power tools unless you team up with multiple other teams you're not going to be making a manicured line from top to bottom so yeah, yeah. What I mean by that is like when it's more rough and ready and like in inverted commas all mountain or big mountain or whatever, I think it suits us. I'm hyped. You've got me excited even yeah. more for it. I think it's going to be amazing. Good. Looking forward to seeing what you guys Actually, get done. Get and yeah. <laughs> holy shit, The Rock's got to get involved this year. Like yeah, the amount of people that tweeted and Instagram that guy, it's just know, mind blowing that he never biggest, saw it. He has got the most friends on Instagram out of everyone in the world, isn't he? Do you know who's got the most? Yeah, I believe so. Instagram has yeah. the most. Actually? Oh, yeah. really? Well, but you the, would, the wouldn't you? Instagram. Instagram. The Insta- at Instagram has the most Oh, really? I thought Instagram. it was Ronaldo. Instagram, then Ronaldo, then The Rock. I, we looked yeah, the other yeah. day. Yeah. Upstairs, Does it really? Facts and figures. <laughs> Fucking hosting. Wow, there you go. There you go. There you go. All right. Uh, yeah. I'm, um, I want to be like obviously really mindful of you guys' time as well. Bren, you're going to need some sleep. Ollie, you look rough, dude. You look like you need some sleep. Shower. Honestly, <laughs> straight off the lid. You need something, dude. You really need to shower. It smell like a giant knee pad. <laughs> Should we just do a few listener list questions, questions and then piece it out? Yeah, let's do it. We can, we can all join in. Oh, do you know what, yeah, I, actually, I, we do you know what I actually want to do before? Because I feel conscious that we've got Steph just sitting out of frame and I just did a, a story about him smashing he, his head. We're actually going to do the um, support local business. Because Steph oh, runs a coaching company, Raw, right? Raw MTB Skills. Raw MTB Skills. So if you need to polish up on coaching, visit Raw MTB Skills and uh, book yourself a lesson. And thank. Perfect. And the discount. What's the discount code? <laughs> oh, There's no. Do that. <laughs> <laughs> I was just lining that bit up. <laughs> 
There's going to be a, lo a lorry awareness scheme. Yeah, lorry awareness. You can do a separate course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, All right so Rory so and TV skills. skills. I'll put a link, link in the, in the show, show description, description. Uh, for anyone who wants to check it out. Speak to Steph. Amazing. Um, Ollie, I thought we'd get into this way earlier than we actually did, but we didn't. It's so, been a good one. Quick we enjoyed one. it. We've just been hanging, haven't we? Yeah, we have just been hanging, dude. Mm. Um, the Rough Cycles, cycles electric, electric Dirt Bike. bike dirt dirt jumping jumping bike. bike. Oh, you see that? Oh, I saw it. I think, oh, I saw it. I also saw a lot of really good comments. <laughs> a lot of really good, very supportive <laughs> comments. <laughs> I mean, I mean, our thought, Mikey. You reckon Mikey yeah. prides himself on being able to sell sand to someone from a sand yeah. country? <laughs> and, and, um, uh, do you reckon you no, could sell you any of those? Another one. You said pens to <laughs> businessmen. Yeah, pens to businessmen. There we go. No, nice. um, yeah. I reckon if anyone can sell an e dirt jump bike, it's that man there. But how, can you sell one, Mike? I've that just shouldn't exist. There we go. No. Can't shouldn't make. exist. I think, don't, I think we don't jumpers. give that the time of day because it's too stupid, isn't it? Has it is it getting too much airtime already? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Let's put that I think, bed. Pardon the pun. Yeah. The dirt jump bike. Oh, that's good. It's landfill. Yeah, it's very good, very good. It's landfill. Let's landfill, landfill that one, yeah. yeah. Just forget about it. Forget yeah. it ever happened. Other than the battery, that can go to a recycling centre, but the rest of it... Have they figured out how to recycle batteries yet? I haven't figured it out yet. No, there you go. We'll just put that on the side for a bit. Mm. Till, um, mm. Elon oh, just a quick out. watching. The Guy Martin's just done a, done a, a show about trying to make the fastest, world's fastest electric car. It's really he? good. Yeah, he bought like, like a Tesla good, battery pack he... and then um, tuned it all up and put it in, a, in an old VW Beetle. Wow. It's like something you drive, actually. It looks pretty cool. Nice. Pretty cool. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, what we got? Uh, a lot of shit about Deeks. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what this even means. We got at, at Fat Dad Rider. Does Deeks' soggy roof lining offend you as much as it does me? Dude, yeah. It, I think it what? offends him more. I don't really care about saggy roof lining. You Is know, this in the van? Tr in the van? Yeah, I, it's not my my scene. I don't really mind about that. But Deeks, it really upsets. He's he's actually very <laughs> organised. People have called him the organisator. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, yeah, as well yeah. as the feetinator, the organisator. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But he likes things okay. in a row, and it makes him very upset as well. So well, surely he'll just fix it. Militant, you could call him, right? You and you could. Very, and many have. And many, many have, have. called him militant. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um. At T underscore wizard, what do you think about Forecross being an Olympic event? Hmm. I'm not mad at that idea. I'm not mad at it. I, it kind of feels like a little bit BMXy, but but actually, a good Forecross track had a lot of cool stuff in it, didn't it? Hard to do that. Used to back in the day. Yeah. Didn't it? Used to back in the day, like some rocks and some what's yeah, some, some Slavix event. Uh, four cross revelations you have i don't i don't know if that's yeah. gone on since the pandemic but that's always a great watch they've got rock gardens massive features they've got that big wall ride that morosi did the uh overtake oh, yes cool. like something like that could work really well couldn't it could do yeah yeah i, I like four yeah i'm not mad at the idea the when the the downhill racers would also do the four yeah, you cross. have to do four crosses like that, that, that was that that's a cool thing i think but maybe some slalom cool. poles have a bit of everything in there yeah yeah, like you could score a few more points if you did the forecross and stuff. Dude, imagine if it had a trials obstacle at the start. So you gated and then you had to... <laughs> and then go into a track. Good idea. And then lake jump at the bottom. Really good idea. Good idea. Lake jump at the bottom. Call me. And lake jump at the bottom, yeah. yeah. Rough cycles would create I like a, it. an e-bike. Bike, forecross bike. Yeah. Waterproof one. e forecross. Imagine with launching <laughs> truck. <laughs> 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 excuse me we've got one here that just says please do prank phone calls but we'll probably get to that on another episode I reckon some prank calls yeah wait till friends not I mean yeah <laughs> um, I got yeah. well funny prank text we sent to Man on Carpenter once that's quite funny that was good I, I think John has talked about has John talked about hit the uh, Man on I vaguely remember it yeah was it about a jigsaw yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when she won Fortnite in World Cup, we we had board in the van, so we texted her pretending to be a puzzle company to sponsor her. <laughs> Bless her. She's like the nicest girl ever. She's 
we picked on there. Yeah. But Fuck bullies. Yeah. <laughs> um okay at rowan child this is a good one might good for everyone i think is there an aspect of your mindset now that you wish you had when you were younger did i say that right sorry aspect is there an aspect of your mindset now that you wish you had when you were younger so i think like so the... many for me do like any worry that i used to have when i was a kid like oh my hair or you know, just like lame stuff when mm. you're younger and you worry yeah. about stuff. And I just think now, albeit I look a little bit dishevelled, um, yeah, maybe, maybe. Um, well, I think your worries change. Yeah, your worries do change. You're right. Yeah, you I can't think, worry I think about it, your hair because you're worried about paying your mortgage, or you can't. Yeah. You know what I mean, like, I just think it aids you in life to not worry about certainly like appearance or like your appearance to other yeah, people. Because definitely, definitely yeah. I think, well, I don't know. Maybe I'm on my own, but definitely I used to worry about that. I can't believe it now. Like my yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. What about you? No, you're right. You, you can't believe you look like a homeless man. <laughs> no, I, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, but I don't, yeah, yeah I, I am what I am, you know? That's what I kind of think now, whereas I used to think like, oh, maybe I'll be cool and stuff. Mm. Yeah. Or maybe I'll, I'll be wearing a suit and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and Joe back <laughs> here. Imagine you in an office job, probably. It'd be a lot, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would be Mark a lot. Brent, is there anything I think they both just checked out, dude. I think both of those two just checked out, yeah. Um, just just peaced out. I just yeah. think you've ne- nailed, knocked it on the head. There you go. Not about I'd say definitely sexual experience. performance. Like, used to worry about that. Now I'm just like, sexual. whatever. It's just <laughs> it's as good as it gets. <laughs> it's just it. That's it. No, it's done, yeah. This is it. Quicker the better. Yeah. And you can start like, right, I'm better than, better than you at this. So you race in, every, in all <laughs> aspects yeah. of life. Like two minutes, I'm like, yeah. Done. Yeah. Really. Quicker. Yeah, faster, faster. Yeah. The first, bit just get get on that there. second. Yeah. Smash the competition, yeah. dude. Good going, nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're proud of that. <laughs> no, um, oh um, put on the spot. We we'll have to. I'll come back another time and answer that question. Yeah. All you right. Well, let's do that. We'll read it out. Yeah, I'll email you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Josh MTB, what's better, Space Jam or Mighty Ducks? Mighty Ducks. Mighty Ducks. Oh, Two, that's... oh he's, a, he's a basketball guy. Dude, did you go and see Space Jam or no? Not yet. I was meant to last week, but it got called off. I don't know if it's like a real... Called kid, off. But yeah, I was going <laughs> with a, a, got friend, called off? a friend with kids and it was too early. Like, There's no late showings of it. So I think, yeah, it might be an indication um, that it's not meant for grown-ups. But I'm excited. It's not going to be as good as the first, is it? Let's be honest. But wait, there's another space jam. Yeah, I'm in the Bronx. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. And there is a new Mighty Ducks too. It's uh, a series though, apparently, on Disney Plus. No. I did really like Mighty Ducks as well, though. Dude, Mighty Ducks. <clears throat> okay. So good. I'm going to make a guess here. Yeah. Brendan hasn't seen either of them. No, I, I don't even know what Mighty Ducks is, but hey. I've seen uh, <laughs> Space Jam. I've seen. I think Have I've, you seen it? Yeah. yeah, I think I watched it on the plane. There you go. That's where I watch most of my hey. films. <laughs> on a plane. Brendan wasn't allowed a TV when he was a kid. No. No TV. And I haven't a boarding school. school. No. <laughs> I wish I went to boarding school. <laughs> then I wouldn't have got bullied. Have some of that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, is Benny out there with you now? Benny's not there, is he? I'm speaking of boarding schools. <laughs> <laughs> no, Benny had to He's family. studying in the back. I was like, Benny has to go and film some vlogs at the World Cup. He well good. Yeah, we'd like to, but I've got another family holiday. So Benny's on another family holiday. Oh, Swanning it's around. Tough, it's so tough. Mate, we're going to try to get into Rampage. That'd be good. Oh, yeah, it would. Absolutely, oh, like that's gonna blow his mind, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, like that. But yeah, um, lost, lost uh, where we were at. Yeah, yeah, it's all good. Um, uh, does anyone at, at Burnbox? Does anyone actually use their car slash van's glove box to store gloves? Oh, it's a good. Uh, that's really good idea, actually. We, we do, do get, get good questions, questions don't yeah, we? Sometimes yeah. like, we really do get thought-provoking questions. Um, Personally, I don't. I don't. I don't know how to put a phone in it. You put a phone in there? Uh, no, yeah. definitely not. I've got a phone in my hand, man. Like on the phone. <laughs> Cash. Stuff I don't want to see. Just like. Cash. Cash. 
Really? Yeah. I put all the documents in all my MOTs and old tax discs, and then I, I've never put tickets. anything else in there. Yeah, parking tickets. Parking actually, yeah. tickets. Yeah. And like the mm. um, weird uh, and the and the uh, special nut you need to take your uh, wheels off that yeah. goes in there. And fuses. Yeah. I always have fuses and an adjustable as well. Yeah. You're going to need that stuff. Yeah. Not really. Yeah. 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 What else is bug in there? It's funny if you drive a vehicle where you carry around an adjustable spanner. Yeah. <laughs> That's so good. I do as well. Yeah. <laughs> poo bag. It's it? class. Poo bag. Yeah. Uh, normally poo bags in there. Sleeping yeah. bag and an adjustable <laughs> spanner. Bog roll. <laughs> bog roll's quite good in the yeah, club. That's quite a good yeah. van addition, isn't it? Bog yeah. roll. Wet wipes, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this one. is just turning into yeah. a list of stuff you can cram in a small space and. The actual go- the question was whether you could put gloves in there. Yeah, no. And you're not yeah. up for that? No. Nah. Up for that? No. Nah. I'm going to give it a go, dude. Big thanks for the suggestion. Get some TLDs in there. Let's get a photo on the gram. Absolutely. We'll do. Yeah, done. Good fish. All right. Uh, one more. At Suffolk Senders, one to end on. Lads. It says lads. Because they, they knew there were going to be more with people. Yeah. With an S at the end. Uh, it's a Z. Oh, no. Lads. 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 Where do you see yourselves in five years' time? Doing the same stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Laughing, riding down hills. Do you know what, well, what island will you be on, Mike? Do you think? <laughs> I'll be 40. Whoa. Shit. Yeah, yeah same. same. I'll be 39, 39 dude, in five, five years. years yeah. yeah. Scary. Yeah. I can barely see two months you... into the future, I'll be honest. So I don't have a clue and I don't really care to. That's my yeah. answer. I don't, I don't really, really think... think that's one thing that actually go back to that question about something you'd take you'd have now that's in your mind that you didn't have when you're younger or whatever it was. Like the concept of age, I've sort of let that go as I've got older. I think when I hit thirty I was like, it doesn't matter anymore, you know? At all. It really doesn't matter. I think you always grow up with this thing of you need to have this when you're this age and you need to have this when you're that age and Really, it doesn't matter, does it, at all? Not one little bit. You worry too much about what you're doing in five years. You lose the grasp of what you're doing at in the moment. So you don't want to worry about that too much. Definitely do, no. some, do some like some planning. Like, you know, do some minor some money management and time management planning. But um, build, build a house, maybe. How's the house coming along, Bren? It's going right, it's going right, yeah. Uh, but I mean, yeah. don't, you know, don't like worry too much about that because be present yeah be present and enjoy the moment which sounds you know everyone says that but if i've got people worrying about that and it's just like that's no good because life goes off on all sorts of weird different tangents and if you you if you focused on one path and you don't take that tangent path then it could be shit is that why we booked mm. flights like the day before we got to go to world cups right? <laughs> you've been present yeah because i mean it's happened plenty of times before. People have booked their flights way in advance, i.e. coronavirus. Uh-huh. Flights before I lost all my money. So book them. And flights, just for everyone to know, you book a flight the day before the flight, you it's made like £10 more expensive. So why would you not do that? It's like an insurance policy. So you're welcome. You can okay. have that tip. <laughs> yeah, that's it's a great tip, dude. I love it. I love it. It's a great got tip. Probably 2,000 flights in my life. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bernard's here. We might have another guest on the podcast. Ah, oh, get him in and then let's wrap up. Wrap it Take up. Who's in? Here he is. Oh, hey, see you later. <laughs> What's good? <laughs> What's going Long on? Long time no see, mate. How are you? Good. Mate, how are you doing? Fucking... Mate, great, thank you. Yeah, really good. Congratulations on the uh, hard line win as well, man. Thanks, man. Appreciate that. Yeah. Cheers, cheers. We actually had a cut off period talking about hard line, didn't we? We sort of decided. Thursday, yeah. yeah, we decided Thursday. No, oh, sorry. Back sorry. Back yeah. back the celebration's over. It's done. It was last Thursday as well, wasn't it? Yeah, we're was like... buying him drinks, being nice to him, and then it goes straight back there in. There wasn't much drink like, buying, no. but they were being nice. No. They were being nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I haven't seen you, man, so sorry. And, uh, no, no, don't say sorry to me. Really <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> Whoa. It's like you bought a bit of sun today. hot in the yeah. booth. Dude, the booth that they are doing the podcast in is hot. Yeah, it's hot in the booth. Yeah, we're in different locations, man. It's, it's thrown me for a loop as well. I'll be honest with you. It's weird. I don't like being in here. It's <laughs> yeah. oh, don't man. like the kitchen area. Uh, Brian, do you want, uh, Bernard, do you want to do a listener question? Because we were just literally about to finish. So. All right, I'll do a question. Let's go. All right, let's do this. Uh, at lovewheel.life, troubleshoot 
Bike theft. Go. Go. Bike <laughs> theft. We were just talking about this here. Uh, chips in frames. How does that not exist? A GPS chip in a frame that's linked to your smartphone. I don't get how that doesn't exist. Yes. Batteries. Maybe the listeners can tell us, but maybe it's battery life. I don't know. I don't know either. Do you uh, remember Gates Tag? His dog's collar. That do you charge that a lot? Yeah, yeah. I have to charge that every day. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, so dogs hate being, been, Apple dogs hate being stuck like to plug as well. It's really not good. Buy my iPhone and put it in your wallet and stuff. Yeah, there's got to be a chip in your bike, not like data tag is the worst thing I've ever heard of you put on your motocross bike because it doesn't do anything Dude, to you. Unless you've already worst. recovered the bike. It's yeah. a waste of money. I had a, I had a bike stolen, 2004 CRF 250. Data tag everywhere, under the, you know, in the airbox, wheels, everything. Did the police have any idea what data tag was? Zero. <laughs> that is like the biggest con of a company I've ever heard of. So I say, yeah, yeah, GPS chip in your bike would probably stop bike theft once and for all. You could just see yeah, where it is. I'll be up for coming up with the next data tag. I'm just thinking stickers are cheap to print, dude. <laughs> we can charge a premium. I'm not bad. Like, we could just say it's got a tag in there. Just... It's got a tag. Yeah, maybe cut this bit if, out of the podcast. We might if, have a new business launch. And if the police find your bike, they can tell whose it is after they found it. Yeah. Otherwise, it's useless. Yeah. There you go. Could call, call it a bike companion. Yeah, make sure you've got a custom spray job on your bike. It's got your name written on it. Then they know it's yours. Yeah. Deeks, yeah, there is that. Deeks got it back. True. Deeks got it back, yeah. If it goes out to yeah. Slovenia like here, probably not got much chance of getting it back. I mean, Deeks did camp out in a garden with a load of raw marines. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was very nearly very bad. I think he, I, I'm thinking the GPS is slightly easier than getting, getting a herd of raw marines <laughs> camped out in the garden. <laughs> Painting your bike pink with oi oi written on it. <laughs> <laughs> <And> that. <laughs> All right. Uh, Bernard, I'm sorry, man, but we've been doing this for ages. and oh Man, i got a shower anyway. It's... I'm yeah, uncomfortable yeah, sat here with soon, broken dude. ribs. We, we, so. I've been we trying to get him on. He's a busy guy. Dinner. We haven't had dinner yet either. Yeah. We had a barbecue. You said you are at the hotel, no? Eating. No, I haven't even showered. I'm still in riding shorts. I stink. Oh, oh boys, boys, I'm so, so sorry. Go, go get, get yourself don't be cleaned sorry. Up. We'll get you on soon, though, right? Yeah, I'll come on soon. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll come yeah, yeah. on soon for a full one. We'll get everyone back on this soon is the for first... a full one. Yeah, yeah, yeah oh, definitely. definitely. This is the first guest we've ever had on a ride companion as well, dude. We've never yeah. had any. Yeah. And it's a quadruple yeah. header. Ooh, yeah, and it's been an absolute shit show. It's a quadruple shit show. All right. Have a great week. Uh, yeah, it's all love. Thanks for having me. Have fun. Yeah. Thanks for listening. And, uh, it's thanks been a fantastic to, Thanks to all our guests. And what was Steph's company again? Raw MTB Skills. Raw MTB Skills. Check them out. Raw MTB bookies. Skills. All right. It's been emotional. Ciao. Peace. Peace. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Cheers, all right. Dog.